Let's get into the sermon tonight. It's about the Bible being an authoritative book. Let me show you this picture. We're going to return to 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. And what I think I'm going to do is we go through this book. I was thinking about doing it like we've done these other books with uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. I'm going to look at themes as they're introduced going through 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus until we exhaust those themes. And the theme tonight is talking about teaching and preaching with all authority. Now the text comes from Titus 2.15, but the idea is introduced early in 1 Timothy 1 verse 1. Look at that picture up there. Someone had thought about that, and I'm going to use this to illustrate 1 and 2 Timothy and Titus. In that picture up there, you've got that young man, and all of these older men are around him. And the young man looks like now he's, he's the, the one that has the authority. How is it that that young man, among all those older men, how is it he has the authority? Well, the authority doesn't lie in the young man. It's in the letter that he is reading to them. That could be Timothy. Or that could be Titus. Because it's these letters that Paul wrote to them that empowered them to do what they were to do. We read in Titus 2.15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. But that idea, though that's mentioned in Titus, that idea is introduced in 1 Timothy 1 in verse 1. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. I'm going to show you the authority in that and we're going to look at that as we look through these epistles. But I want you to know the Bible is an authoritative book. You know, even those that don't believe the Bible, or at least they say they don't believe the Bible, they recognize it's an authoritative book and it upsets them. They can't sleep it, and they can't let it go. It keeps bothering them. The way the Bible speaks, it just speaks with authority. And the very way the Bible began, began that way. I want you to think about what was the first scripture where the Bible was first beginning to be written. And if you'll think back, it's when God took his finger and wrote on those tables of stone. Now those tablets were broken by Moses, but then Moses wrote on those tables of stone. What did he write? He wrote the things that Israel had heard from that mountain on Mount Sinai. And just as it is written with the finger of God and then by the pen of Moses, so it was written, so it was spoken by God, from Mount Sinai first, when God spake these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now those are words of authority, aren't they? And so the Bible begins as, we, as it is written, those opening lines of the written scripture or words filled with authority. Now Moses would later write Gen Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and, and Genesis along the way. I know he would write them all, but that's where he began. The Lord thy God, and no other gods before me. Look at 1 Timothy 1 and verse 1. And I want you to notice the words of authority as Paul began. He is Paul, an apostle. That's an authoritative word. I'll show you in just a minute. By the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ. You hear those words of authority? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, 
And then Titus 1 verse 1, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. What gives a servant their authority? Well, the authority doesn't lie in the servant. It lies in the master of that servant. Why are you doing this? My master told me this is what I'm to do. This is what I'm to say. And the authority that the servant has, it comes from the, the master, doesn't it? And that's where the authority of the apostle comes from. The word apostle means one sent. And the authority that the apostle has comes from the one that sent that apostle. Two other places Paul identifies himself as an apostle in these epistles. And notice how authoritatively he talks about his apostleship. <coughs> I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. And then this is in parentheses right after that. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. I've heard people say things like, I'm standing here flat on the ground, my hand up in the air when I say it. Why are they saying that? Well, they're saying that because they want to emphasize to you, you need to believe this. And that's what Paul is saying. I'm ordained a preacher and apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. And then in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 11, I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. Let me put all those five scriptures together now. Here's what we find. Here's what we find. Paul is a preacher, an apostle, a servant, and I shouldn't put up there that word teacher. Paul, why are you doing this? Who gives you the authority to say this? I say this by commandment by ordination, by appointment, by the will of God. These are authoritative letters that Paul is writing. 1 Timothy 1, verses 1 through 2. He's talking about Jesus as Lord. And look what he says in the very opening here. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God and Lord. Jesus Christ. There's authority in that word, Lord. He says it again, which is our hope. And to Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus our Lord. He is going to refer to Jesus as Lord in First and Second Timothy and Titus 24 times. Now, as always in Paul's writings, they're just saturated with Jesus Christ our Lord. And he either uses Jesus Christ our Lord or some combination of those three words 49 times through these epistles. But about half of those times, he's referring to Jesus as the Lord. And here's the kind of Lord he is. 1 Timothy 1, 17. Now unto the King eternal immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Look how he refers to Jesus as Lord in 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16. The blessed and only potentate. What's a potentate? He's a supreme ruler and, and a ruler. And Jesus is the only supreme ruler here. The blessed and only potentate, here's what it means, King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality. What does that mean? It means if you want access to immortality, you're going to have to get it from Jesus. He's the one that dispenses that immortality, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be glory and power everlasting, honor and power everlasting. Now that's, a, that's the man of authority. And then in 1 Timothy 1 in verse 3, he calls him God, our Savior. The authority of Jesus is the authority of God. 
And in 1 Timothy 3, 16, talking about Jesus, he calls him God manifest in the flesh. There can be no higher authority. And this is the authority that appointed Paul to be an apostle and said, write these things to Timothy. And that's what gives Timothy his authority to teach and to do what, what he was doing. In Titus 1, verses 1 through 3, we're reading that opening, Paul, a servant of God, apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. That's how God's making it known. Through preaching, and then he says, which is committed unto me. Look at that word committed. According to the commandment of God our Savior. Those are authoritative terms. Now we understand commandment, but committed, I'm entrusting you with this, Paul. I'm going to commit this to you. And now you have a commitment. You're going to have to answer to me. 1 Timothy 1, 11 through 12. Where he was talking about the word made manifest through preaching. Here he calls it the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Paul, you've become the trustee. I have entrusted you with this word and committed it to you. And now you're going to be held responsible for that. And so Paul has the authority to teach it just as Jesus gave it to him, just as it came from God. And he said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me. He gave him the power, empowered him, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now Jesus put me here and gave me this trust and appointed me and ordained me. Timothy, that's the authority behind what I'm writing to you. And to you, Titus, these are the words of authority that are found in the book of 1 Timothy. Charge. Charge them that they teach no other doctrine. The end of the commandment is charity. This charge I commit to thee, son Timothy. These things command and teach. These things give in charge that they may be blameless. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things. I give thee charge in the sight of God that thou keep the commandment without spot unrebukable. Charge them that are rich in this world. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Timothy was to use that authority given to him through this letter to make these charges to others that they might know is Paul is accountable to the one who sent him, so I'm accountable through this letter he has sent me, and now you're going to be accountable to God because this charge has been delivered to you. Let's look at Titus. Set in order the things that are wanting. You hear the imperative there? And ordain elders in every city as I have appointed thee Rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. But speak the things which become sound doctrine. Young men likewise exhort. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Put them in mind. This is a faithful saying and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Titus, you're going to be responsible for this. Now, there's your charge. And that's what you are to deliver then to others. 
And then they're going to be responsible for this. Second Timothy. It's a much milder letter, Second Timothy. But even as Paul is writing these very last words, and he is facing a near certain death, which he says, I'm ready to be delivered and time of my departure is at hand. And he writes this tender letter to Timothy, but he doesn't drop the idea that these are authoritative. Hold fast the form of sound words. That good thing which is committed unto thee, keep. The same commit thou to faithful men. Consider what I say. You know, that almost sounds like a warning. You consider what I say. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord. And then it ends with this. I charge thee therefore before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. You see the authority? Charge. God. Lord. Judge. Kingdom. Preach the word. So that would empower Timothy, wouldn't it? He knew what to do when he got these orders, when he got this, this letter. He could stand before that group of men and read that off. Says, now here we go. This is the charge that I have. Titus 2.15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Now, Titus and Timothy and no preacher of the gospel can keep anyone from despising them. Some people don't like any authority. And a lot of times it's the authority that they despise. If this is just presented as a good idea and then ask, well, so what do you think? Well, they wouldn't mind that. But that's not how the Bible comes across. It comes across, no, this is it. This is the authority and you're going to be accountable to it. And there'll be those who are going to despise the man that will teach the Bible in that way. And you can't stop that. But when he says, let no man despise thee, what he's telling Titus here is, you don't let the fact that they're going to despise you stop you from reproving and exhorting and speaking these things with all authority. The authority didn't come from Titus when he spoke. The authority's in the word. Preach the word. A lot of time people look upon preachers as an authority. And preachers stand up and sometimes they act like authorities. I've heard men speak as though, now I've got these degrees and I've got this background and I've got this ordination. And then they try to speak from their own authority. They, we used to have a track out there and it was titled, The Preacher Says, But the Bible Says. <laughs> And you compare what preachers say with what the Bible says. Where's the authority? It doesn't lie in the preacher. It lies in the word. And why would Paul need to emphasize this in personal letters to Timothy and Titus? You know, when you read the book of Galatians, there's a lot in the book of Galatians about Paul justifying his apostleship and the fact that he, he got these things from Jesus Christ. And he justifies that in the book of Galatians. He didn't get it from the men in Jerusalem. He got it from Christ himself. And then you go in the book of uh, Corinthians, particularly 2 Corinthians, where Paul lays down, he said, I speak as a fool, but he has to tell you why he has this authority and what he suffered and gone through. These others are telling it, listen, I more. And then he talks about how his authority comes from God. Now he had to do that because there were those questioning his authority and challenging him on that. And he met, stood right up to that and met that challenge, but not Timothy. Not Titus. These were the young men he had nurtured and brought along. And Timothy knew Paul had authority. Titus knew how Paul had authority. And all Paul would have to do to them was, says 
Let's do this. Let's do that. And they would take that and run with it because they were devoted to Paul. Why then would Paul use so many words and expressions of his authority in writing these personal letters? It's because they weren't just personal letters. Just like that young man in that picture. These were the letters that Timothy and Titus were to read to the churches. And they were personal letters that were intended to be read publicly. And they've been preserved in this book. And as we read through these letters, we're doing what they were intended to do from the beginning. These are the personal letters that were written for the purpose of being read publicly that we might know down through the ages where the authority comes from. It comes from God through the apostle, by the things written, and by the preacher only in so far as what he speaks is faithful to what this book says. That's the real authority by which men speak. That's as far as we're going to go with this tonight. But from now on, when you look at, let me get back to that. When we look at this, I'm going to try to start each one of these lessons off with this picture. When you look at that picture, I want you to remember this lesson and remember that authority. Now let me give you the authoritative word. Here it is. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And I speak that with all authority. Not because there's any authority intrinsic in me, but by the authority of what this book says. And so if you want to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ, then tonight is the night to do that as we sing this invitation song.